Okay, let's uh, let's take some super chat questions, and then uh, I want a few other things I want to say. If socialism causes poverty, how come more socialistic mixed economies like Germany and Scandinavia have no homeless, while England and the United States have a ton? Well, socialism doesn't cause socialism to the extent that it is tried. That is, the more consistent the socialistic policies are, the more poor people they are, right? So the more extreme you go to the Soviet Union or to Nicaragua or to Venezuela or certainly to North Korea, the more or to China under Mao, the more consistently socialist you are, the more poverty you have. And, and what happens, uh, the more consistent you get is more and more and more, a, a larger and larger percentage of the population is poor, significantly poor. Um, so, so first off, you have to start with that. Now, it's true uh, that, so, so that's one. Second, Germany and Scandinavia uh, are not socialist. They have redistributive policies, but they're not, they're not socialist countries. They, they have more socialism than the United States. Uh, and it, what they have done is they have accepted that the average person in Scandinavia and Germany, first of all, that, that the whole distribution of wealth is compressed, that, they, that on the top side, there are fewer wealthy people, significantly fewer wealthy people, and therefore there are fewer very poor people. They've compressed the income and wealth distribution, right? But on average, and in every point along the distribution, people are poorer than, let's say, in, in the United States. I don't know about the UK, in the United States. So the rich in America are richer than the rich in Germany, on average. The, 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 the upper middle class in America is richer than the upper middle class in Germany, and bigger much bigger the upper middle class and rich the way to categorize that that you know i don't know in the us two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year and above in income that group is massively as a percentage of the population i don't have the percentages with me but you can look them up massively bigger than the percentage of people making the equivalent of two hundred fifty thousand a year and up in germany and in sweden the middle class in the united states is significantly richer than the middle class in Sweden and Germany. They both, on the, in, in a sense of income, in a sense of what that income will buy, in a sense of the kind of cars they, they, they drive and purchase, in a sense of the bigger homes that, we, that, the, that people have in the United States. By every parameter, the standard of living of a middle class American is higher. And then even the poor in the United States, not the very poor, not the homeless, the poor in the United States, live generally the highest standard of living than the poor in, in, in Sweden. So the whole distribution is shifted. And yes, there are fewer very, very poor people in Germany and Sweden than there are in the United States. So, so, so at, the, at, the, at, the, at the extremes, the United States has more people. Now, Take, take homeless problem. Now, I don't know if they're homeless in Germany or Sweden, so I'll take your word. As somebody in the chat said, there's homeless people in, um, um, the homeless people in Denmark. I know that there's, uh, there's, there's homeless people in London, but homelessness is a particular problem of cities like London, cities like LA uh, and, and, and American large cities where basically the cost of living is so high that people cannot afford to live, so they cannot afford to own a home. And because homelessness is heavily subsidized, people have a strong incentive to, to, uh, to give up a home which they cannot afford and go live in the street. And it's sad and pathetic that that exists, but the reason that exists is government policies. Now, yes, you could solve that by handing every homeless person a massive check as, but that, that, and then, or encouraging them to move to cities where they can afford the housing. 
The other problem we have in the United States is a mental health problem. Uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who, uh, who have mental health issues, who cannot take care of themselves, who have basically gone into the street and there's no system to take care of them. Now in Germany and Sweden, my assumption is, is that the state takes care of them. They put them in institutions. In the United States, the state stopped taking care of them, stopped forcing them into institution in the 1980s. And that was, that's part of, uh, you know, part of the reason uh, you, ha you had a, a spike in homelessness in the 1980s. And the second reason is that there's no low, in low income housing in major cities in the United States. It's just not built. And it's not built because politicians don't allow it to be built. This is all a political issue. So it's not a lack of government. It's too much government that creates the homeless problem. If government got out of the real estate business, if government left land and real estate development to real estate developers, if they stopped zoning and trying to control everything, then there would be plenty of housing available for homeless people. If the, if the government stopped subsidizing homelessness, then homelessness would, pe homeless people would go to places they can afford to live in. Nobody wants to, or almost nobody wants to live in the street. So the problem is not that the United States is more, is more capitalist than Sweden and Germany. I, I've said this many, many, many times. The differences between the United States and Germany and Sweden are very small in terms of how much capitalism each country has. Sweden and Germany have decided to redistribute more, particularly Sweden, the United, but in many respects, they regulate business less. In the United States, we regulate more. We regulate everything. We have licensing for everything and we redistribute less. Both the United States and Germany are mixed economies. If you measure things based on homelessness, then you could argue Sweden and Germany is a better mixture than the United States, but I don't measure it based on homelessness. I measure it based on the quality and standard of living of the middle class. Uh, the middle class is the standard for me, not you know how, how mentally unhealthy people are treated. And the middle class in the United States, because most people are middle class, that's the essence of the middle class. And the upper middle class in the United States is huge. The amount of wealthy people in the United States is enormous. That's the measure I have. If you're hard, if you're healthy, hardworking adult, in which system are you going to do better? And there's no question. It's not even close that even though the United States is not a capitalist country, even though the United States is not a free country, even though the United States is not that much freer than Germany and Sweden, it's freer enough so that if you are a healthy, hardworking individual, you would do much better in the United States and Sweden and Germany. And that's the standard. The standard is not the worst in society. The standard is the normal. The standard is the best. The standard is the hardworking, ambitious individual. In which system do hardworking, ambitious individuals do best? Capitalism. Okay, we don't have capitalism in the world today. In which system, Germany, Sweden, or the United States, do hardworking, ambitious people do best? Best. I think the United States and the UK, by far, by far. And that's how you should measure. The problem is that altruism has conditioned us to think only in terms of the worst off. Now, let me put it, let me also say, the United States is not in good shape. The middle class is not in good shape in the United States. It could be doing much, much, much better. Much better. So, if we had real freedom, if we had real capitalism, uh, Americans would be doing Every, any country that had real freedom and real capitalism would be doing a lot better than the United States. There's nothing magical about America. If you want ambitious, hardworking people to, to be successful, then capitalism is the system. The more you move towards it, the better off they will be. All right. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect.
not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourownbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show. And, um, and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next.